What's up YouTube? I'm just another guy and welcome back to the Walsh Way here with Applewood Swift Town. The Champions League second qualifying phase is here. We have Kukesi. I think that's how you pronounce that. The accent, I'm not too sure how you pronounce it. But I think it's Kukesi. They're from Albania. And it's a game we're going to win. We're going to win through it. It's a game we expect to win. We're a game where everyone sees us as favourite favourites. So hopefully we can go out there and put in a good performance. So we're going to go to transfers because we've had a little bit of action. And by a little bit, I mean quite a lot of action. So I'm pretty sure you already know about Tristan Hill. Sanity is being recorded before the actual end of season update. Uh, which will be recorded right after this because I just played forward. So not sure about Tristan Hill, but he was sold for a million. I'm pretty sure I would have covered him last season. So I don't think there's any real point in me going over him. I'm pretty sure you know about Scott Reeves being loaned out. I'm pretty sure you know about Gary McGuinness. And I think you may know about Matty Reeves. But we'll continue from the three transfers onwards. So we'll ignore these top four. Although really, you know, you can't really ignore Tristan Hill. A £1 million to Hearts wanted a bigger deal, so he left. So guys out on free transfer. Craig Neal signed him and really was an alright player, but I never really rated him. So in the end, he spent two seasons as backup player. I really wanted to get rid of him, but no one really wanted him because of the wage he was on. So as a, as a result, he just had to let his contract die out. So he was off. Terry Whitehouse is gone. One of the first real players we started pushing through the sides as a goalkeeper. I don't think we've had another goalkeeper that we haven't signed. Uh, so Terry Whitehouse is probably one of the only youth goalkeepers that, that has actually come for our youth level and actually played for us. So had four great years, of, well not great years, four decent years of us. Um, and really at that point on just fell out of the first team, just became the backup striker. And in the end I decided he didn't want to extend his contract. He was asking for a little bit too much wage for a backup strike, backup goalkeeper, sorry. So off he went. Colin James, centre midfielder, decided to let his contract die out as well. 20 years of age. Played decently, well, had a decent future, apparently, um, but never really developed. I don't think letting him go out to Linfield and Leicester were exactly beneficial to his development. I don't think he really learnt too much there, so maybe better to keep him at the side, but never really forced his way into the team. So off he went. Stuart Carrier was our first choice left mid for two seasons. Well, first choice, he sort of played rotation, but with Gareth Bale coming in, with Austin coming in, Alston, 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 I think it is. Alston coming in, and um, now we have another left mid in. There was never going to be a place in this team in the future, so in the end, decided that, again, let him go. He wasn't needed. Ryden James, at one point, was, you know, I, I actually thought he'd be a really good player for us, really good potu uh, potential. And that's why he played eight games in one season, got three assists and three goals. And for the rest of that, uh, for next season, I loaned him out to Port Talbot twice. And just came back, and again, players had grown so much. We now had a lot better players at the side, and in the end, he was just not good enough to be featuring in the team, so off he went. And Kevin Allen, goalkeeper, backup. Again, went out on line two times. Never really thought like he was ever going to be in the first team. Only reason he stayed at the squad so long is because he was the third-choice goalkeeper, but decided to let him go this season. Elsewhere, Daffod Burrell has gone out on loan to Burnley. Centre midfielder, looking forward to see how he goes there. He was on loan at Sligo for their remainder of the season last year, so never really played too much. Didn't feature for us that season, and I'm expecting him to play a few games for Burnley. It's in his contract that he will play a few matches, and I can recall him if not. Elsewhere, Dylan Rees is going on a free transfer to Sunderland. I'm pretty sure I mentioned this last episode, but I'll mention it again. Very good player for us for the two years we've had him. Uh, his contract was expiring. I weren't sure if I was going to offer him a new deal. In the end, Sunderland snapped him up, which meant I had to sign a new right mid. But I think we've got someone better than Dylan Reese, so I don't think it's exactly a bad loss. I don't think we've met, you know, we'll be kicking ourselves later on in the seat, later on in the years to come that we didn't keep Dylan Reese for a little bit longer. So I'm fine with him going there. Elsewhere, Tim Davis went to Sligo for nine for twelve thousand seven hundred fifty pounds. Again, left mid never really going to push himself on the first team. He had one season where he played quite a few games, and due to the Champions League run, he played eight games a season following. But last year showed that he was our third choice left mid, and he wasn't really going to feature in the side. And again, we've we signed a left mid this season, so I made the right decision because he would just be in the reserves. He was on a decent bit of wage a week. It was nothing incredible. I think he's actually on the same wage here. He's on like £210 a week, which isn't amazing. But at this time, we were over our wage budget. And I wanted to get rid of players. wanted to slim the squad down as much as I could. So I think that's a good deal. I think that's a good bit of money to pick up. Simon James has gone out on loan to Burnley. Hopefully them two can start a partnership at Burnley in League One. Very good player for us. And 
I I found out that I have Smitham and Day Lewis in centre mids. Then I have about four backup centre mids I had at the start of the season. Had to get rid of two of them. And Simon James and Daffy Burrell both had loan deals coming for them pretty much the same time. And I decided, you know what, fine, we'll let them go on loan. Burnley are paying all their wages and that is why they're out there. And then the latest selling of the club nine days ago, 1.4 million for Kevin Bland. The highest ever fee we received for a player. And when we go to the Inns, when we go to Jose Miguel Fernandez, you'll know why that we've decided to get rid of Kevin Bland. So, good player, very good player, decent potential in him, 19 years of age. But I feel the right back we've signed this season is better. And has, and I don't think Kevin Bland was ever going to really grow to the potential of the current right back we have. So I decided I wanted to let him go, offered him to clubs of 2 million. West Brom came in with a 1.4 million bid and I couldn't negotiate it. I stalled it for about 3-4 days and then decided, you know what, I don't think anyone else is going to make a deal. I might as well accept that 1.4 million offer. And so we, we did. He's gone off to England now, picked up 6 winners medals in the senior squad, including one in the under-19s. Had a very good career with us and I'm sure, you know, if I hadn't signed that right back, he would have continued to play at the side. But in the end of the day, that 1.4 million is going to do us massive, massive favours. Because if we don't go in the Champions League run this season, we will be relying on the 1 million picked up from Hill and the 1.4 million picked up from Bland. So, overall, I think we made some very nice transfers. Shame to see Tristan Hill go. I really wanted to keep him. Kevin Bland, not so much because I feel we've got a good enough right back already in the side now. And Tim Davis, I think that's just a decent feed to pick up for a bit player. So, the ins, the more interesting side. Jose Miguel Fernandez, right back. And by God, is he a good player. And this is what I mean by I'm not sad seeing um, Bland leave. So we play a fullback automatic in the team. And when you look at this guy's stats, his physical stats are amazing. But not only that, he's got decent attacking stats. Something Bland was always struggling with throughout his career. I was always trying to develop them up. And he's on 3.6k a week, which does make him, I think, the highest paid player in the side. But when you see that he's got four caps for the Portuguese national team, I think that by far makes up for it. Coming from Benfica, never really broke through their first team, only ever made three appearances for the Benfica first team, the rest of them for the B team. But I think he's a very good player, I think he's a decent player, and I think he's definitely Champions League quality, and should be doing decent enough. So, really looking forward to see how this guy goes, and he will be starting in today's game. As where Mitchell Armstrong, he come in on a free transfer, I'd signed him after we knew that we weren't going to be retaining Dylan Rees in a, uh, and coming into this season because of the the Bosman ruling. So this guy, former Tottenham trainee, broke through his career at South End, had a pretty decent year last year, nothing amazing though. But overall he has a decent report. A lot better than any of the current right mids that we have at the side. But not only that, he's got some very nice physicals. Overall the, if I go to the winger stats that I'm looking for, he is a very good winger. And, you know, okay, his other stats aren't exactly great. His teamwork, his work rate, his positioning and things like that. And, of course, I'd love them to be higher. But his main stats, his key stats, are decent enough. So, Mitchell Armstrong, it's going to be very interesting to see how he goes this season. And then the last two signings we made are loan signings. And these are guys that will play... Uh, well, actually, I'll, I'll go into each player and tell you what they will play. So, Alex Nicol Nicholson come in. I, that's why I decided to sell Kevin Bland. I, I knew that I could loan in a good right back. And um, I thought if we can pick up the 1.4 million, we can get a guy in who's not even going to be on a wage for us personally. He'll be paying by someone else. That's a good thing. So I utilised my massive amount of parent clubs. I looked through them all, looked for good players. And Alice Nicholson was there. He can play on both wings. He's a very good player. He's Welsh. Actually, one of his reasons why he chose to come here is because he said he wanted to come back to his Welsh roots, which is nice to see. And overall... I think this is a great loan signing. Not paying a single wage. He's our backup right back for the season and backup left back, really. I don't really mind playing him in either of the ways. And really has had an amazing, lo amazingly long career. He's probably... Look at that. He's not really played that many decent sides for a lot. Played with Dom Furman in, in this SPL. That's probably a very notable thing to do. Elsewhere, though, Bowery of League 2. You know, a lot of League 2, League 1 sides. Never really broke into the championship team. I'm surprised not getting Forrest signed him, actually. But... I think this is a good player and it's a decent player to pick up as a backup loan player. And then last guy is Bird, left mid, and he'll be playing as our first choice left mid this season. 
Bale's stats, they've declined a lot over the summer. Sadly, I probably shouldn't have signed him onto a new deal, but I've got him for the year. So again, I decided I'd use my massive amount of parent clubs. I'd look around, look what I could find for a left attack in mid, and try see if I could try and get one on zero pound a week contract from us. And Lloyd Bird, it, Leon Bird, sorry, is the guy that fit the bill. And again, if we go into his winger stats, he's not amazing, but his stats I feel will do. They're better than anything else, really, at the side. Better than Alston, better than um. Bale, Bale will probably be on the bench today, I'm not too sure, I haven't decided. But overall, decent player, and you know, he should be good enough for the level, he should cut it, so looking forward to seeing how these guys go. So those are the transfers, bringing in 2.42 million, breaking the transfer record fee twice over the summer. So let's go into this team, we're going to go into the pre-match, as we always do. So 914 people are going to be here at the Cardiff Athletics Stadium here today for the Champions League match. They're going to play a 5 3 2 day reckoned for the other team, and we're going to play out. We're going to go out with this team. So, a few changes I want to make. I'm not sure if I want to be playing Bale or I want to go with. Uh, actually, it won't make a difference. So, the team for the bench to the day will be as follow. Let me just plop everyone in that I want. Right, so the team for the day will be Cornell in goal, right back Fernandez, centre back Colin Drake and Allen. And on the left we have Scott Drake. Right midfield we have Mitchell Armstrong, centre mids we have Smitham and Lewis. And on the left we have Bird and up front we have Will Evans and Nathan Green. So let's go out there. I'm expecting a big win. I'm confident of a big win as well. And yeah, let's see how we go. Gukesi, I believe it is. They have gone out and played a 5 3 2. Quite a negative formation, but it still does have an attacking presence, so we can't relax there. Defence will still have to be on top of itself to make sure we don't concede a, a goal this a goal today. I think we have the fitness advantage. They're a professional team, but I doubt they've come back from their pre-season early enough like we do. We've had a few weeks of training and two pre-season friendlies. So good luck, lads. Expect a win. Expect quite a comfortable win. And hopefully we can walk away. Pretty much securing ourselves through to the third qualifying phase. So here we go straight away off the bat. We have passed the ball around nicely. We get the ball to Nathan Green. He's brought down in the box. Sadly, no penalty is given. That is fine, though. And we started off very, very brightly. 79% of the ball after 15 minutes all over Kikusi. I'm not sure if they've been in the Champions League or Europa League before. That was something I didn't bother checking. I just knew that we should be beating any team in this round right now. We're a very good squad. And it only sort of becomes interesting once we get to the third qualifying phase. Once we know who we've got, and Armstrong has somehow scored a total fluke. That is damn right at the bottom. There is no way he should have been able to get it in from that angle. I don't know what the keeper has done. He's beaten two, def two of them. He's you know on the, on the players on the left, two of his markers, although one of them is marking him. And Kumi just sort of, I don't know what it was. He should have just easily caught that. In the end, for some reason, he's pushed it in his own goal. And it's given us a very easy 1-0 lead. Bird has sadly picked up an injury. That is not good. Putting Davis on the left for the rest of the game. Should have put that left mid on the bench. But I don't think that would make too much of a difference. So here we go. Attacking down the right yet again. Evans back to Fernandez, The new signing. Connecting with Smitham. We passed the ball right back in our own half. What are we doing there? Don't make a mistake. Please don't be a keeper glitch. Okay, it's fine. It's good. <laughs> That's passed. Here is Davis. On the left, not his favourite position, but like I say, I don't think there's too much of a difference playing on the wings, just whether you're favourable to that foot or not. Drake not passing the ball in time, not playing the ball well enough. Again, we've still got the ball back though, we've got the ball to Evans, back to Nathan Green. We've been brought down in the box twice, Lewis misses the first shot but scores the second, rebounding off the post, straight back to him. Doesn't make a mistake of the second one, back of the net, 2-0. 27 minutes gone, we've had 75% of the ball, we've had 10 shots, 4 on target, 3 half chances, 3 long shots, and 2 goals. Very, very simple, and I think Cornell's a right to be complacent, he's not seen a shot come at him yet. Oh wait, my bad, sorry, he has now seen a shot come at him. Oh no, well it's Davis done, his poor first touch has allowed them to regain the ball back. I don't see us conceding today but if we do it would be a massive shock and it could cause an upset you know momentum maybe with them we hope we've dominated so far but you only need a shot to, sc to score you only need two shots for them and they could be back in this game at 2-2 and we're very lucky to survive that there 
very, very fortunate. So half time two nil. That is very, very nice. That is what I want to. That's what I wanted to see. Okay, we could have, we could be more ahead, but I mean, what are you gonna do? Two goals. We don't need to win the game. We don't need to win the leg. I mean, the match, not the match. Uh, we don't need to win the tie. Ten nil in aggregate. We just need to progress through, and that's the main thing that is happening today. Uh, I don't think I'll make a sub. Actually, no, we will. We'll make a few substitutes now. It's been 71 minutes. Day Lewis picked up a knock. We might as well just take him off anyway. And we will take Nathan Green off and bring Billy Alessandra on. So will be two around and play with false nine. So, here we go. I don't think these changes will make too much of an impact. I mean, I think the game is over and I think my team know that, which is why we're not really pressing too much going forward. We're just retaining the ball and making things difficult for the other team. But we've got a corner here and Allen has actually scored the goal and made it 3-0. It, you know, it took a massive deflection off the keeper. He should have really saved that. It was right at him. I think I have the keeper or the defender. I didn't see. But good corner from Smitham. Finally, Carl and Drake at the far post. Drake does the right thing, heading it back into the danger area. Actually, no, sorry, the defender heads it back into the danger area. And the guy that was meant to be on the post ends up knocking that into his own net. Or really diverting it away from the keeper in, in his own goal. So, we're going to win this leg 3-0. Nice victory. Great result. And I would really say that has got to be us through to the next round of the Champions League. But still, I'll meet you back for the second leg. And hopefully we can just add to the goals and make things, and make the Albanian team a little bit embarrassed. Alright guys, so we are back now for the second leg against Kukesi. Um, no other changes to the team. We've made one new signing, Shaquille Hunter. And we'll be actually going over him next episode. And this is a new tactic that I'm looking to play in the next game if we progress through to the next leg. But for now we're going to keep with our that typical tactic, we're going to keep it this normal tactic and go out there and play the second leg like we did the first leg look for an easy comfortable win again and find ourselves going through and playing B-A-T-E Borisov I think it is, I think it's the second part of their team name We've played them before, they're currently playing, who are they playing today? a team with a green badge, there you are Flora or BATE, I think BATE already have a four goal lead or something like that. They have some stupid lead, I think. So really we should be facing up against them in the next leg. In the next round, sorry, the competition. And really, I don't think we're going to lose here today. I mean, there's still a chance. There's still that, that slim bit of chance that, you know, we will walk away with it from today with a free goal defeat. But I highly doubt it based on last leg performance and based on how these first ten minutes have gone so far. There we go, Green with the ball now. If he can find Lewis, he does. He finds Lewis. Oh... Unlucky, forcing a very good save. Here is Smitham with the corner. So you can find one of our centre-backs. Can't. It's been cleared away. Green's going to get it, though, right away back. Near his own half. Not where I expect him to be, but that's chasing back the ball, I understand. Day-Lewis with the early opportunity to give us the lead, and that's the highlight. So we start off brightly. Hardly anyone in this stadium. I, don't, I didn't even check the attendance, but I don't really care. It's away from home. <laughs> and this team isn't a big team. In Albania as well, it's not exactly a massive footballing country. Fernandez with a beautiful tackle down the right. Shamefully, his pass isn't as good though. Is Nathan Green picking up the ball, playing the ball to Evans? Evans now one on with the keeper, straight at the keeper. But Bird is there. Bird scores, giving us a one 0 lead today. And two really good opportunities we've had so far. I missed them. Good thing that Bird was actually there to follow up the wasted second opportunity. Good opportunity by Evans. Fantastic save from Curry, the goalkeeper. One firm hand to the ball man should push it away. But straight into the path of our left midfielder. So 1-0 on the day. 4-0 on aggregate. Let's see if we can get a few more today. Here is Bird yet again. Bird's running through. If he can make a second. Oh, fantastic. Last second challenge from the defender. Blocking that shot. Smith him with the corner. Armstrong unable to rise above the arms of the keeper. So, really, this game, I'm just seeing, hoping it ticks through quite quickly. Alan, amazing opportunity, the ball's wobbling around, and I'm really looking forward to the next leg, because we've played them before, BATE, we played them two years ago, I think it was, when we got to the Champions League, oh, I've clicked on the button, and we got to the Champions League group stages, and on that occasion, we beat them, I think, quite heftily on aggregate, so, really, I'm looking forward to the next round, hopefully we can progress through, and mean that we've got group stage football next season. Whether, that in Europe, whether that's in the Europa League or in the Champions League, I don't really care as long as we get group stage football. That is an important thing. 
Although, obviously, I want Champions League. I get a massive money boost from that. There's Cornell out to Fernandez, Building up the play slowly from our defence. Armstrong, see if he can flick it past his defender. Ah, he can't get it round him. He's got the ball back, though. Day-Lewis, back to Smitham. Passing the ball around beautifully. Still, Nathan Green gets the ball to Bird. Oh, just wide of the post. I don't think he could get it any closer to the post without hitting it. Well, it looks like we're going to come in at half-time. 1-0, that's fine. Could have scored more. Really, we should have scored more, but I don't really care. Like I said, we're already through. We know we're going to progress through to this next round. And I think the performance here sort of shows it. You know, we're trying, but not too hard. I mean, we've got to fight 15 shots. We've only five have been on target. We've had six clear opportunities. That's a real big thing. And we've only scored one of them. I don't, I like I said, I'm not too fast. I'm, I'm okay. Here's Bird down the left. Whipping this one in. Finding Evans hitting the crossbar. Oh, God. oh unlucky there. Fernandez to Armstrong. Down the right, the two, the new right side of our team. Linking up well early on in their partnership. Smith and whipped this ball in. Can't find the green shirt. He's getting the ball back though. He could maybe get a shot here. No. Pass the ball around. Lewis with the shot. Good save from the keeper. I probably said the keeper's keeping a minute. He really is getting their, getting their money's worth out of their goalkeeper today. He saved quite a few decent opportunities. Here is Evans picking up the ball. Let's see if we can whip this one to the opposite side. Ah, oh, I just can't get it. Not enough power on Armstrong's pass. Fernandez getting the ball back to Armstrong, though. Let's see if we can flick a pass his defender this time. Can't. Yet again, that's the second time I've seen him do that. I know he's got a pace in him to do it. Here's Evans with the ball, with the shot, hitting the crossbar yet again today. And here's Nathan Green. Oh, my God. How have we not scored that rebound? Oh, wow, it's 1-0. I don't think anyone knows. Kind of getting a bit silly now. So we'll make a change. We will take Nathan Green off, bring Billy Alessandra on, swap these two around, which is sort of the typical thing. Armstrong's not having a great game. We're going to bring Gareth Bale on, and who's looking a little bit tired? Bring Nick Smitham off and bring on Viv Gunter. And we'll make. Actually, uh, we'll cancel them changes. Don't want to actually make all of them changes right now. I want to make sure I have one left over. I guess we'll keep arms. Um, I guess we'll keep um, Smitham on. We'll take Viv Gunter off. I mean, not Smith. I'm sorry. I guess we'll keep Armstrong on as. Oh my God! They've actually equalised. <laughs> making them changes, cancelling it, making them changes again. I haven't seen the build-up play, but they've actually equalised against us. And this is going to do nothing to the overall result. I don't think Scott Drake's missed header. Cornell's decent fir uh, first save, but pull it right into the path of the same player. We find ourselves 1-1 in a game that really, if we scored all of our seven clear-cut opportunities, we'd be currently 10-1 on aggregate. <laughs> this. It's quite a weird game. Bird down the left. Come on, let's see if we can get a second. I don't want to draw this game. I want to win this game. It'll do good for our coefficients. Points. Ah, oh, another wasted opportunity. I may actually go for this. I'm going to go for this. Really, we, we shouldn't be in a situation... Where we're dropping points here. Armstrong's picked up a bloody injury yet again. This guy cannot play a game without picking up a knock. We're going to take Gareth. We're going to bring Gareth Bale on. Sorry, not take him off. And see if that experienced player out on the out on the right can make a difference. But a draw here is not ideal for the coefficient points. I expected a win. To walk away with a draw is a surprise and shock result. And I'm sure the other team will be absolutely chuffed that they've managed to get a, a draw here. It's going to be a throw in deep in half, and that's how it's going to end. So, strangely, we've drawn 1-1 one, one here. It's not the best result. Let's see what the assistant says. I'm very pleased with the performance. Eh, it's not the greatest team talk. But that's it. We're progressing through to the next round. Let's have a look. Just, just confirm everything. Get the next one through. So, yeah, BAT E1, 7-0 on aggregate 4-1 on the day. We're going to progress through, playing away from home in the first leg. And draw isn't good. Bill Alessandra's out for 10 days. And the next time I meet you back will be in a week's time, I believe. It is a week's time. So until next time, guys, peace out.